Welcome back to Band Aid with Doc Rock here at Morning Show Central.com. Okay, okay, Cleveland, United States, the world is watching. Well, you know, let me tell you a little story. Once about a time in 1967, out of a northeastern Ohio road, a trio of rock hit makers. You know, they were a musical gang of many talented and legendary members who came and went, but three of the finest survived to finally release such classic albums as your album, James Gang Rides Again, uh, Thirds, Pass and Throw, Straight Shooter, Bang, and more. You know, one founding member survived, and it is just, it survived it all, basically, and is still alive to be here with us. You know, <clears throat> welcome, Jimmy Fox. Well, thanks. Good to have you here. It's good to be here. How you feeling? Good? I feel great. You're looking good. You know, it's incredible. I'd just like to say, you know, really, it's, it's so, we're so proud to have you here. You are truly a legend, and it's just cool stuff. So. I'm glad, and I might say that we all survived. Uh, yes, so. we are. You know, those are the most <laughs> interesting days in rock and roll. And, you know, it's funny. When you go into Wikipedia and you go into the James guy, it's like six Pages. No kidding. Six pages. You got them right here. Oh, wow. Six pages. I thought maybe something was wrong with my printer, but the pages just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. It's amazing. So, wild stuff. That's good to have you here. You know, I think everybody wants to know, though, just in terms of our background, you know, where did you grow up, Jim? You know, we got I grew up in a, in a suburb on the east side of Cleveland okay. called Cleveland Heights. Cleveland Heights. Uh, yeah. Did you go to Cleveland Heights High School? I did. You did? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I graduated in 19... <laughs> well, that well, was Something. 1970. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, you know, for, after high school, uh, did you go on to college? I did. Mm -hmm. Um... I started, well, I went on to a lot of colleges. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Started out at Ohio State. All right. And put in a year there. Uh -huh. And then I transferred to the Cleveland Institute of Music and ah, okay. set my goals kind of high for a year. Uh -huh. and learned a little bit about the classical side of things. Sure, sure. Um, and after a year, made a decision that that probably wasn't where I was going to wind up. Okay. And uh, wound up at Kent State for, well, three years. Okay, okay. And that was really the point where the gang got going once, uh -huh. we got, once we all got to Kent together. Uh-huh. Oh, I can imagine. You know, did you continue your musical training at Kent? Yes. You did? Okay. Yes. So, so when you ultimately, I assume you graduated. Nope. You didn't. They started shooting. <laughs> oh. it, you know? Yeah. That you know. was <clears throat> all of our collective last day of college. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. I, well, so I can imagine. We, what we, a, what we've a not been back. Um, I'm so close. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, oh, Joe yeah. has an honorary degree. They were well, kind sure, enough to take course. care of him <laughs> that way. Um, and we we talk about it, how, how we didn't go back and sure. how we could, but yeah. I, I just don't know that I would. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, no, it's a real emotional part of you. I'm sure that's, you know, oh, gosh. and everything. What, uh, what tumultuous times in America. Well, and it got, it got crazy because the band was getting success at that, right uh -huh. at that moment. You know? uh -huh. In fact, we had played the Fillmore East wow. the weekend... Mm -hmm. of the problems at Kent State, and okay. we flew back Monday just in time for the shootings. Really? It was like May 4th, was it 1970? May 4th, 1970, wow. our collective mm -hmm. last day of college. Wow. So. <laughs> That's a great historical story. I didn't yeah. even know that. So viewers, yeah. boy, you've really learned something about Jimmy Fox and the James Gang. <laughs> and I don't think that's even in six pages of Wikipedia. So <laughs> really? That's somebody's got to submit that. That's incredible. Well, you know, in your career, Jimmy Fox, you could have located and relocated anywhere else in the world. Obviously, with all your success, I'm curious, why did you stay in Cleveland? And, you know, what do you like about Cleveland? What keeps you here, Jimmy? It's an interesting question. Um, and we still talk about it, actually. Dale Peters, the bass player, and I speak sure. about that exact issue often. What made us choose not to move, say, to the West Coast at a uh -huh. certain point when most of our work was out there anyhow, right. recording was out there? Um, it felt like home then. Uh -huh. And in the craziness of life on the road, Cleveland always felt like a good place to come home to, you know. Ah. And when we were done with the tour and when you wanted to unwind and when you wanted to relax, it wasn't so bad to come back sure. to Cleveland. Oh, sure. You know, Joe always mm -hmm. would say, he said, you know, I'd try to come home after a tour and I'd step out of my front door for a pack of cigarettes and <laughs> somebody would drive by and say, hey, come on, Ringo's recording. You know, <laughs> four days later, he'd come dragging home, you know. Uh -huh. it, it, it just... It didn't seem like it was relaxing, and it seemed like I always wanted some time to decompress uh -huh. in between. Sure, sure. Well, and that's so important, and, you know, for anybody with a successful career. I think one of the great Hollywood movies said it best, there's no place like home. I guess so. Click, 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 <laughs> throw a drummer or so. <laughs> I guess so. Hey, by the way, you know, Jimmy, do you consider yourself a drummer, or are you a percussionist? I'm so a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I really am. Now we know. Okay. I know how to do all that other stuff, and okay. I enjoy it, but I am, 
in my heart and in my mind, I'm a drummer. And, and, and you know, and because you're so defined in that statement, what yeah. what is really the difference? Because when it really comes from a rock angle, is it the downbeat? The Here's the, the downbeat? difference. Mm -hmm. Here's the difference, and, and I'll tell it in a good little story. Okay. Which I shared with Ringo recently. It was very <laughs> interesting. I was coming up a listener, a practitioner of all kinds of music. Yeah, I loved yeah. it from jazz to classical to just absolutely everything. Uh -huh. Always appreciated it. I always wanted to be a drummer. Mm -hmm. Always wanted straight to be a musician. Drummer. Straight right. up a drummer. Yep. yep. And then I heard the Beatles. Uh -huh. And I heard Ringo. And very subtly, but very distinctly, there was a change. Mm -hmm. I no longer wanted to be a drummer. I wanted to be in a band. <laughs> and I still wanted to be the drummer right, in the right, band. Right. But I wanted to be part of that experience. And it became more important to me than any specific skill sure. I might have learned at a set of drums <laughs> or at a percussion section or, or anywhere else, you know? And that, and I wanted that experience. I wanted that camaraderie. I wanted that feeling of interaction that it's you can only get in a band. And so many young people today who love the Beatles, you know, love them for the creativity, and then, you know, the today's generation, who can sometimes barely name the four Beatles. Right. But, the, you know, among many things about them that are so attractive, they played as a band. Yes. They played as a great, tight quartet, you know. Non, not any one of them any greater than the next, and the sum total sound. Ringo made yeah. me see yeah. that, 64 notes a second was not the goal, you know? <laughs> right. The goal is to s say something with the number of notes that you play. Amen, boy, amen to that. You're yeah. absolutely right. Well, you know, let's go back in your career a little bit. You started with The Outsiders. I mean, I a did. wonderful band, The Outsiders. And I, you know, I read your reflective post to uh, Bob Lefsetz recently about the, about the passing of Outsiders founder Tom King. Yes, you know? And, and yes. so many had so much to say. And, but, but I have to ask you, you know, The Outsiders were absolutely incredible with a big string of hits, and, and I mean, you guys, you could you could like practically do no wrong, okay? But you know, switching from a dance pop and ballad style, you know, band with horns and the outside like respectable and all that, you know, to creating the James Gang. Jimmy Fox, did you have some late sixties musical epiphany or you know No. Did you inhale? No. <laughs> did I inhale? There's a fair question. Um and that's pretty radical though. Well all of a sudden, you know. it, it you need, I think, to know that the Outsiders was never my band. Okay. I was a sideman in The Outsiders. Ah, okay. And I played for close to two years with a band called Tom King and the Starfires, ah. which became The Outsiders. The Outsiders. Okay. Well, I did that from 1963 into 1965, at which point I finished high school and left Tom King and the Starfires okay. to go off to Ohio State. Okay. okay. Make my fortune. <laughs> and I had a band at Ohio State, and uh -huh. we were a... Beatle band, a Rolling Stones, yeah. probably more Stones than Beatles, sure. you know, that kind of thing. But the Outsiders, who Tom King and the Starfires became, went into the studio, recorded Time Won't Let Me, and the first time I heard it on the radio, I thought to myself, oh my God, <laughs> this is a smash yep, record. Yep, and is. as luck would have it, not for the drummer, their drummer yeah. was drafted. Oh, and Tom okay. called me down at Ohio State and said, Jim, I don't know what to do. We need to start an album in about 48 hours, oh, oh, you know? Geez. And we have a tour booked immediately <laughs> after, wow. and my drummer is leaving in the morning, okay. you know? So I did what, you know, the, the classic, what every parent fears. I was like quitting and joining the circus, you know? I left college <laughs> and joined the band. Oh my God. Um, so as a consequence, I inherited the Outsiders musical direction. Okay. And I don't mean to say I didn't like it. I sure, did like sure, it. I was a horn sure. guy from the beginning sure. oh, until great. I heard the Beatles. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But by the time I was on my own, by the time I was at Ohio State, by the time I was starting a band and I was trying to get certain things, I was leaning towards American blues. Uh -huh. I was leaning towards the British interpretation of the blues, okay. such as the Yardbirds yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah. I was idolizing the, 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 the Jeff Becks people of Paul Butterfield, you know, things like that. And I always felt that if I ever had a band, that was the thing closest to what I was sure, thinking sure, of, you sure. know? So I had a little of that going in Columbus, but of course an opportunity to play with a recording band that had a, a, a literally right. a number one record Absolutely. coming, you know, was on its way up the charts Absolutely. and it never stopped. Yeah. And I thought, well, I won't miss this opportunity, uh -huh. you know? So I got to make the album with them oh, and I got to do the tour with them, which coincidentally included the Hullabaloo TV show, okay, which sure. was the link that Bob Lefsetz <laughs> put in the testimony to Tom King. I thought it was dead and buried. Lynn 
you went know, to Bob to find everything. You don't, you don't like, you know, who wants to see yourself 40 the something years access. earlier? We're Boy, out there. I'll tell you. Well, but, it is. That that proved it to oh, me. Yeah, you that know? was really that. Well, you know, but in the whole 60s, because the James Gang were, you know, was so from 67 into 70, we, you know, were so defining. You know, did you, Jimmy Fox, did you guys ever have any desire to sort of migrate to San Francisco to be a part of the Haight Ashbury scene, you know, with Janice and the Dead and everything? Was it. You know, was there ever any of that that California, L.A. scene that you wanted to be a part of? This is going to sound very egotistical to you. No, I love it. I've heard it all on this show. Go ahead. We won't tell anybody. We 